This is our batting board. Oh, that's great. And that gives a record of what we're trying to solve okay. as old business and then new business is there. Mm -hmm. Now, what John Moser has suggested is that all the old business have a date permanence on it and a person to drive it. I would, I would Without buy. that, there would be a cut in their pay. Yeah, old, old you, business is uh, customer development. But I'm saying these are the topics here. I see. Okay. Right now, we've got decapitation, we've got people going on, we've got theft, we've got stuff that no normal business would even tolerate, right, right, let alone right. survive. Yeah, you, it's hard to survive that. As a cat has nine lives, we've got over a thousand. So anytime you have that kind of stuff going on, what you have is an erosion of profits. That's what happens. What's profit? Profits, what's left over. After revenue, I've heard about that, but revenue I've never experienced it. minus expenses, minus losses. It's a myth. It does not profits. exist. Yeah. Because profit is one of those like a unicorn. All right. So that's what it is. Okay? That's what we're striving for. And if there's that, then there's more to share. There's, you know, if you can get profitable and still make money, there's room. Who's talking? There's room. Huh? Somebody's talking over there? Okay. I thought someone was talking. Yeah. Okay. Make sense to everybody? That's why we have to strive for that. And that's why it's so important that you check yourself and go, hey, whatever I'm doing, if I'm goofing off, that's eroding profits, right? If I'm if I'm not you know where I'm supposed to be, that's eroding profits. If I'm doing work that has to get redone, that's profits. That's what eats profits. Rework, um, you know, not not working fast, not working productively. Those are road profits. Right? Now, do you remember <coughs> the intro thing that McGraw and I and Ken went to? Yes. People came back from those things really excited. Mm -hmm. Really like, wow, we're going to take the world by storm. Yes. Can you give a piece of that? Or do you remember enough, LeBron, what got you excited? What was it? There were different things. Well, it's more or less the, the same thing you're talking about now. And, uh, and uh, oh, Mike and uh, Kevin, they went away with the idea of it. Every job had a <coughs> problem. <coughs> yes. And they wanted to come back and do the... Uh, the uh, over the board price increase on the customers, and then they wanted to mm -hmm. try to get rid of some of the customers that weren't making. Oh, yeah, we can talk well, about they started with the rainy day that. fund, they started putting money aside, the emergency put, fund, like they're yeah. going to retire on this thing. They right. hadn't done the thing, so we did. We started putting money away for the rainy day fund, right? Yeah. This thing got deducted two weeks later as the rain rain came. As the rain well, stuff like that. <laughs> like, uh, we missed some here. That's, Rent, called, that's called an emergency fund. Rent is not. An emergency. No. It's a normal it comes every it's month. A budget. <coughs> Staying every away month. playoffs is there. Make your take one eye and go like this. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta he, he works twenty four hours a day and he sleeps all off. You cannot be at the front of the church sleeping. <laughs> Do you remember any of this, Ken? Did it come back? Yeah. What what excited you that you remember? Because Ken has been well, I mean we've been together thirty some years, we've done all kinds of business things. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I don't remember much. <laughs> well, well, I think that was the one we did on, you know, the business growth engine. It was some of this, right? Yeah, yeah all that but, sounds but familiar. We, we David talked, binders, but, right. Yeah. We talked. We talked through a lot about what is what is a business really, right? What yeah. is a business? A business is a collection of systems and functions, and people who run those. Its sole purpose is to generate a profit. Because I think you you kind of did your eBay business based on what they showed you. Mm -hmm. I think that came, you, you applied right. some of that. Yeah. Right. And, and so. as we've talked about, it's a collection of these functions. Now, these this are the high-level ones. Within that, right. there's, all kinds of, there's all kinds of separate tasks and functions that fit inside of that. If you had a hundred million dollar business, would they fit those? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you're a billion startup, dollar business, would it startup. fit that? Yes, they all fit. Absolutely. Have. Now, it's, these it's, are generic. The size of the business dictates how complex these are. Right. Right. In, in your case, they don't have to be super complex. In fact, the the simpler, the better. The more streamlined, the better. Here's a here's something you can take to the bank. When in business, this is true, every activity 
has a cost. If you want to reduce costs, you want to increase profits, reduce unnecessary activities. How about if you can't go to a customer's job and fulfill it because you forgot to get the soap that we could do the job? Where would that fall under there? That would be that would be a profit ero profit erosion because you'd have Purchases, to come back. Well, it would be it would, it would be really part of. I think it should be part of delivery. So then, where's operations? See that? Well, operations is all of your bookkeeping. That's inventory management. That's purchasing. But when we when we purchase things and they're physically here, and then people steal them, and we don't even notice. Well, that's not good. We don't even notice a forty foot ladder. Right. Missing. Right. That we don't even profits. see that whole equipment just disappears. Right. Or that people go to signs with credit cards and buy stuff and they never make it in the office. They're never in our books. Right. Does a company that we want to be part of, are we going to fix that? That's operations. But that's what we've got to decide. Right. When and you and it's also some I, of this. We Why try to put one person on each of these without having to split heads. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to have the layoffs role defined. The Legrand role defined, mm -hmm. the Tom Masters role defined. So what I would recommend is instead of defining names, define functions and then assign names to right. those functions. Remember I said we don't have titles. When, when we work with our clients, we recommend you don't have a title. You have a, response, a list of responsibilities for certain areas. Right. So you might have, hey, uh, Legrand's responsible for operations as an example. Now, would IT fall under that? Uh, IT would fall under this. Would yes. cyber attacks fall under that? Yes, and also under this one. So they could go either way. Are Actually, you up to date about that the head of the CIA in the past 10 days had his own stuff? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We had 64 people yeah. at the Kansas City thing, which is the smallest site I've attended. I've been going to all of them since 2002. Three of them publicly admitted their entire system was hacked and wow. stolen. Wow. And they had to pay 10000 and more to get it back, to get it back. By, yeah. by basically foreigners yeah. that have come in. Oh, it's, it's and the so U.S. government said there's nothing we could do. Oh, no. right. Have you updated your thinking for this? Because we're, yeah, we're right. in the primal we, we definitely right. talk about it here. Okay. So what is asset protection in finance? Finance means that we have a good set of books. Um, that we have... Uh, we're screwed. We have a good process in place to to uh, fund the business. We're screwed. Uh -huh. <laughs> that we have contracts in place that, that keep us out of trouble. That we have uh, good insurance in place. We're screwed. Right? <laughs> that we have... Um, you know I'm filming. That's what all this is. <laughs> we pay for insurance. Right. Go right Cyber, on YouTube. Uh, we had a head-on collision <laughs> on August 7th. Yeah. Today is November 5th. We have yet to get, receive the check. Wow. For that, and because this man has lent us ten thousand dollars, we've been able to keep going. Wow. Is this bullshit or what? This is American family. That's why we're switching to your guy. Yeah. Hopefully. Because American family, we've had fourteen years, and they told us in, in, in sixteen days ago we're doing high fives and bumping. They're going. We still haven't got the check. <laughs> is this unbelievable? It is. We have insurance, but it just doesn't pay. Well, it's like it's like Seinfeld said: you're good at taking the reservation, you're just not good, <laughs> not at, good at doing it, <laughs> right? You're just not good at keeping it. And and so that's what asset protect. Also, business continuity planning is what happens if you know you have a fire here, right. or there's a flood, or there's a tornado. We may have a fire very soon. That's my number one option. <laughs> Whether I. <laughs> If I burned up in it, people are going to have a huge party because that'll just be an accident. But that's what asset protection is. So you, you really have to have that cover. That's an important system. Uh, planning is some of what you do, but it's actually having having a formal process in place to figure out who you're going to sell to, what things you're going to work on improving this quarter, next quarter, and, and in a year. What goals do you have in place? For the business, so that's planning. That will be pumpkin plan. Yes, planning is that's part of where we'll go. I want to talk about pumpkin plan in a second. Team development is exactly that. That's making sure that you have a process in place to make sure everybody's trained, they know how to do their job. That's what we do here, uh, and, and we're they're outstanding at it. Yeah. How many guys have ever worked at McDonald's? You know how they train you, right? Mm -hmm. One one system at a time. One job at a time. That's how they train you there. 
right? I worked there. <laughs> did, did, did a couple years there. So mm -hmm. that's what they do. They, they train you one little piece at a time. And when you get good at that, they train you on the next thing. And when you get good at that, they train you on the next thing. And if you stick around long enough, you, got, you can become a manager because you'll know how all those other systems work. And then you start training other people. Right? That's team development. How long does it take to replace a manager at McDonald's? About a year. No, I'm saying when one goes, what's the time frame? Oh, the tomorrow. Man? It's under 24 hours. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, tomorrow. Most incredible system ever developed. And, and, and it, it, is, it is really founded on this whole, this whole notion Absolutely. of breaking things down into manageable chunks. You know, I remember when, and I, I was there working there in the night, late 1970s, they, they had a book that was about this thick that had all the jobs to find in it, the, the SOP. And, and it would, there, was a, there was actually one for cleaning the bathroom. Yep. There was one there. And it told you what you had to do and what you had to wipe and how much stuff you use and yep. what color bottle you use. And, yep. I mean, you put the napkins in the thing. And I mean, it was the, that's what I remember. And if you, know? you didn't do it, what happened? You got, well, you didn't get the next, you didn't get to move on to the you next You could go thing. to redevelopment a couple of times, so normally yeah. you're gone. Yeah, they don't, they don't mess around. If you didn't show up or if you didn't do the stuff, that, they, they didn't tolerate that for very long. Right? Because yep. there was a bunch of people waiting to get in there. There was always a list of people. Right? But, uh, but that's really what you want to think about when you think about team development, um, is, is developing a system to train people. Right? And mm -hmm. that means that you got to have people who are experts at different parts of the job. Right. Right? So, you know, and, and it makes sense to kind of specialize in cross-training. <clears throat> right? Yep. Um, you, might, you might have somebody that's really good at cleaning a certain type of <coughs> apparatus, you know, and, and they've got that down pat. And they're experts at it. Right? They're like the problem solvers. Right? And they're the troubleshooters. <laughs> okay? Um, the next thing, um, when we talk about all of these, right, let's talk about the pumpkin plant for a minute, because Joe keeps talking about that. Have you guys been through that? Have you read it? I know how Joe's many, been How many have listened it. to it on the disc? All right. So you know what it's about, right? That's, that's so really crucial. can somebody tell me How many what hands went up? Count. About four. So can somebody tell me what the, what's the main message in the pumpkin plant? The main one, if you've listened to it. That the customer is valuable to you. Yes, but. That you would do whatever necessary to fulfill their, uh, their needs. Correct. Their requirements. But what customers? Your, your customers. biggest, most your, profitable customers. Your ideal customers. Right. Mm -hmm. Your best customers, your VIP customers. They're not always customers that produce the highest revenue. They could be customers who send you a lot of other business. They could be customers that really, really appreciate what you do. They pay on time. They, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into that. But you're right. The, the key here is that we can't be everything to everybody. But we can be outstanding to the people that we focus on being outstanding for. We can become that biggest pumpkin in the patch once we define what the patch is and we get clear on what it is that those customers really want and need and can't get somewhere else. Question. Yes. So, on your delivery, if it's your number one importance. It is, yes. And it's the key. So, we've said that, you know, if you were designing a, a pumpkin patch, you've got all these that are out here. All the pumpkins have to be taken care of. All of our customers have to be taken care of. We have a lot of customers that are not profitable right now. And, but in order to deliver that satisfaction and that wow factor that you talked about, mm -hmm. That customer cannot become profitable because there it takes go. us it takes us three or four hours to get that job done. Right. How do we make that customer now a profitable customer? Well, there's a couple ways. You can raise prices. 
or not do business with them. If you're losing money, it doesn't make sense to do that. Right? Okay. <laughs> if you gave me if you gave me five dollars, and every time you gave me five dollars, I gave you back three. Would you quit giving me five dollars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, bet your ass you would. <laughs> right? On the other hand, if you gave me five dollars and every time you gave me five dollars, I gave you back seven, wouldn't you want to give me more five dollars? Yes, there you go. It's that simple. Right? When you're doing jobs that aren't profitable, you're giving me five dollars and I'm giving you back three. But nobody in their right mind would do that, right? Do you know anything about Joe Dispenza? Do you know anything about quantum physics no. in this mold? Because you, in a few minutes, you're going to get your first taste of this. Okay. What he does is there's time management, there's asset management. Yep. What he's introduced is energy management. Oh, I believe in energy. I believe energy is really a But key. I'll, I'll show you a couple things yes. that take you 15, 20 minutes. If you're into it, I yep. will, will back. And, and, that's, and that's why the pumpkin plan is so important, right? Because energy, and I, I want to talk on energy. When you're doing work for a customer who's paying you what you're worth, and they're, and they're treating you decent, and they're, you know, they're respecting you, and they're understanding what you give, don't you want to do more for them? Don't you have more energy? Rather than if you go in there and you go to work for somebody, and they're, they don't appreciate you, they ain't paying you on time, they're, 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 everything you do, they're questioning. You don't want to do much work for them. I don't. <laughs> right? So, so Joe's point about energy is important. One of the big things about the pumpkin plan is when you're doing work with customers that get you and you get them, your energy level goes up. And as a result of that, your quality of work, your quantity of work, everything goes up. So I... Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of spiritual intangibles that Absolutely. we can sort through here. Absolutely. But does that make sense, to you guys? So, so that's. Did you have a question? Oh no. Right. So that's 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 why this pumpkin plan is so important, right? Is we identify who are those clients that we do work for that were profitable, and what is it about them that makes them profitable, so that we can identify them out there in the field. If we're, if we, let's say we had, um, you know, we had a, a third, if we had a hundred customers that we made a dollar each off of, that'd be a hundred dollars, okay? Or we had 25 customers that we made four dollars each off of, which one would be easier? Right. Which one would require less activity? Exactly. Does that make sense, everybody? That's what we're talking about, right? So on that same. So back to. So then does that help you answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So on that same note, so if the customers we have that are not profitable now, if right now we've got a lot of new customers, new employees here, and we're mm -hmm. learning and we're training and mm -hmm. so forth, so we're not doing the the work to justify to say, hey, so and so, we got to increase your price. What have you been okay. doing for? So that's part of planning and strategy and team development. Yeah, when we study this, if we could give them an extra value meal, right. there are so many people that need five and six and seven of our services, and they right. don't know it. Right, right. And we don't send people that's how there we make it profitable. that can say, you've got oil stains in the driveway. You've that got the delivery thing that's a mess. is you've got customer development. But that, that's the thing where that's that. we've got customers there that we can grow the pumpkin patch. So if we offer to them, they say, I don't want it, yeah. go, I'll go buy adios. They suddenly don't get our best service. We yeah. use them for training purposes only. We have thought this thing out, Tom. Okay. We know a pattern. Now we've got to have people to execute it that aren't here just to steal and decapitate the place. Well, well, let me, let me, let me give you a, right, but I'm saying we, let we me give you just out. a quick view of what Joe was just saying, right? Your first job with a customer is going to yield you a little profit. So, but your next jobs yield you a lot. By little things, like you said, hey, I noticed you had stains on your this, or we, your carpet, or this, and there's other things you guys could do, right, that fit right in your sweet spot, 
if you're too busy trying to find the next pumpkin, you're neglecting the one that's growing right under your nose. And that's really where your profits come from. You've already got an established relationship with them. Now, it's really important that you start with a good pumpkin, meaning that you start with a client who is going to appreciate what you do and that you're a good fit for and they're a good fit for you. Does that make sense? Yes. Not everybody is a good fit for what you guys do. You're not a good fit for every customer. Right? If, 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 you're, if your uh, message or if your business <coughs> model is we deliver super high quality, none better in the industry, service, but you don't want that. The client is somebody that's not, they just want somebody to get it done as fast, as cheap as they can. That's not a good client for you. But if you have a client who understands that having the work done in a quality manner actually makes them and saves them money in the long term, that may be a good fit for you. One minute, wrap up. Okay. This One was minute. just your taster. I just wanted these people to meet you. Okay. Now, quick poll. Danette's come here a lot and you haven't seen her. How many would rather talk to Danette than this ball headed guy? Well, she's a hell of a lot better Danette. looking. Way want to <laughs> She's a hell of a lot better she's looking than I am. Danette, two um, company dinners ago, came early, stayed late, did the whole thing, got the whole thing about what was going on with my death on the river and coming back. She heard the whole thing. You haven't heard any of it. So I'd say we'll bring you up today. All right. Mike and Annette are, are our team. Yep. So she's got. She's got. I, I'm. My real. My real passion and my real background is in systems and process and metrics. I'm a software engineer by trade. Okay. That's where I. That's that's my where I came up. So I tend to look at business as a series of programs, systems, processes, databases, metrics. That's how I see the world. So we definitely want the net. Anybody disagree? <laughs> <laughs> this is the only time you're going to see Mike. All right. <laughs> the net's all about the message, uh, the market, the, you know, but it takes two, right? Um, she's got a great, she can help with the message delivery. My job is to help with the delivery delivery. Yeah. Right? She can tell a great story, but if we don't do it, <laughs> right, then it's just BS, right? right? That's all it is. And so we work together to make Questions? sure those are in a line. Yes, sir. No, no. 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 Okay. All right. All right, guys. Mike I appreciate and I have an appointment. So thank Good to meet you, you guys. Thank you. Thank you.